When a baby is born, its fist is closed. This sort of closing or keeping the fist tight is a sign for a struggle or a movement. Those who wish to fight against the injustice meted out for them start combating for rights with closed fists. When the child grows, such fists depict various methods of livelihood. May it be for giving respect to others, or for begging, or may be for taking bribe or illegal gratification. The fists and palms play an important role in one's life. It may ruin or elevate one according to the circumstances. As the adage says, the flower emits sweet smell from its early days. A person shows the signs of nobility, stature and magnanimity from the childhood. This is appropriate in the case of Chandra Rajeshwara. Comrade Chandra Rajeshwara was born on June 6, 1914, in a family of rich landlords of Mangalapuram under Challapali Jamindar. The prevailing atrocities of Jamindars, landlords, colonial rulers, and the impediments of poor, who were crushed under the iron feet of them, made Rajeshwara to react in his early years. Further, such exploitations brought Rao nearer to the thoughts and policies of communism. Having had his secondary education from a Hindu school in Machliputnam, Rao went to Banaras universities for higher education. In Banaras, Chandra found solutions for many burning issues like exploitation of the poor and downtrodden. That was Marxism. Chandra was attracted towards Marxism. He joined in Young Communist League in 1931 in Banaras and got full-fledged membership of Communist Party in 1934. Rao made efforts to bring his classmates into the fold of communism. He was discussing with the Telugus of Banaras about imbibing the thoughts of communism movement. There were 55 Telugu students, and of them, Ponnam Viraragavaya, Katragadda Venkata Narayana Rao, Polipeddi Narsimha Murti, Pulupala Sivaya, Nanduri Prasad Rao, Yallabandi Polisetti, Somuri Venkata Ramaya, Chandra Ramalingaya, C. L. Rayadu, Katragadda Srinivas Rao, Tarimala Nagireddi, Neelam Rajasekh Reddy were very close to Rao and they were participating in such discussions. During those days, the students of Banaras with RSS ideologies and supporters of communism were fighting for establishing their school of thoughts. Rao was standing forefront to snub the RSS. That's the end. The university administration gave him the transfer certificate, TC. That is not just a TC, it turned out as tonic certificate, TC, that became instrumental for Andhra communist movement. Rao left BHU in 1936 and joined in Vishakhapatnam Medical College. His entry into Vizag was a turning point and many student movements came onto light. He was active in the programs of the Communist Party and labor unions. He started Marxist study circle and started preaching of ideologies of socialism for workers and university students. Students under the leadership of Chandra attempted a large-scale protest march when the British governor visited Vizag. 
When the Goons of Justice party attacked on Chandra, he faced them and trashed all of them. This incident attracted him towards politics. Having decided to work for Communist Party on a full-time basis, Rao had given up his medical education and reached his native Krishna district. The people at large did not realize the magnanimity and broad-mindedness of Chandra. At this stage, he disposed of the entire ancestral property inherited by him, and the money accrued was donated to the party. Besides establishing the party branches in Krishna district, he started providing training for volunteers, establishing youth associations. In those days, Krishna District was the center for Communist Party in AP, and Rao started working as its secretary. In spite of being busy in the party activities, he conducted summer schools in Kottapatnam, May 1937, and Mantina, 1938, and imparted military drill, camp discipline, etc. At this stage, Rao came into close association of Savitri Devi. He married her in the same year. Both of them strived for the development of party throughout their life. At the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939, the British government imposed sanctions on the communist movements. Rao did not deter from such impositions and went underground. Being in exile, he started building strong party cadres in Andhra and Telangana areas. Rao's literary work on party in 1940s brought him laurels. He toured Telangana in 1938-39 during the rule of Nizam and established Communist Party and gave new shape for the movement. When the atrocities and dictatorship of Munagala Paragana Jamindar came into light, Congress Socialist Party Committee was established and Chandra as a committee member toured Telangana extensively. During this period he met Chiravuri Lakshmi Narsaya in Kamam and Devulapali Venkateshwarao in Suryapet. He also associated with the active members of Andhra Mahasabha. For those, he conducted a secret political school in Tunikiparu in Krishna district. Having come to know that the police are behind him, he disappeared from the scene and continued conducting school in many villages. Chandra had submitted a report on the Communist Party movement in Telangana area in the Andhra State Committee. From then onwards, Chandra had been representing Telangana movement on behalf of State Committee. In 1940, Rao had conducted political classes in Hyderabad Reddy Hostel and in Usmania University. In 1943, July 8, 15, Puchilapalli Sundaraya inaugurated party's third state level meet in Vijaywada and comrade Chandra Rajeshwara was elected as party secretary. Rao continued to be the party secretary from 1943 to 1950 and again during 1956 to 1961. Rao had the distinction of being the only secretary having worked as the secretary for such a long period. Chalapali Jamindar attempted to get rid of the agricultural workers who had been regularly paying the cess and other dues to him. They were cultivating the lands honestly, but the Jamindar could not tolerate them. Then Chandra took the lead and became the leader of those workers. He converted the Chalapali riots movement as anti-Jamindari people's movement and started to combat the situation. He faced the hooliganism of Jamindar when the latter ordered the attacks by hundreds of gundas. Besides the arrests in July 1942, imposition of Section 144 and horse attacks did not deter him. He fought for the justice for the poor. Ramalo, Bandiribu and Edi on the Yam. Bandiribu Munte, 
అది జమీందారు ఇక్కడ ఆక్రమణ చేసుకుంటా నాది అన్నాడు కానీ నీది కాదు నీ లేబర్ అని ఆయన ఒక ఉద్యమం తీసాడు తీసిన తర్వాత ఆ ఉద్యమానికి లేబర్ మొత్తం కలిసి వచ్చారు కలిసి వచ్చి దాన్ని అరకలు పెట్టి దొంతున్నారు ఆ జమీందారు కేసులు పెట్టి బందరు నుంచి గుర్రాలతో జనాన్ని తీసుకొచ్చాడు తీసుకొచ్చి ఓ పరార్ ఈయన అక్కడే ఉండాడు ఉంటే ఈయన్ని రెక్కల తీసి వెనక్కి కట్టారు కట్టి తీసు ఇది కాదు వేరే ఇంకా ఐదు ఎకరాలు ఉంది ఆ ఐదు ఎకరాలు కూడా బన్ లేబర్ మీది కాదు మీ భూమిని అమ్ముకున్నారు అని అప్పుడు అడ్డం పెరిగి ఇచ్చేసాడు చేసి అప్పుడు అరెస్ట్ చేసి ఈయన్ని తీసుకెళ్ళారు Considering that he was instrumental for all these, he was imprisoned along with Chalapali Narayana Rao, Guntur Bapanaya and a few more coolies for three to six months. The punishment imposed on Chandra made the Chalapali Jamindar happy, but his happiness did not last longer. Can we stop the sunrise with our palm putting across our eyes? Thus, such arrests and punishments did not cool down the anger and commitment of Chandra. He was against the atrocities on poor and the misdeeds of the rich. The party meeting after this movement gave way to anti-Jamindari struggle. The result? A large-scale movement under the leadership of Chandra for the distribution of lands belonging to Challapali sugars. He toured many villages and encouraged the villagers for a combat. His efforts made the agricultural laborers to get about 3000 acres of lands. During those days, the Telangana movement was well known even in international circles. Chandra had a key role in this struggle. Andhra documentary of 1949 was a noted feat and Chandra played an important role in bringing out this documentary. Under the guidelines of this documentary, a guerrilla movement was to be taken up and to be extended to all parts of India on the basis of Telangana open areas. This was also termed as China Mode. The Central Committee had accepted this documentary in 1950. At this stage, Chandra took up the responsibilities of Central Committee as its secretary. But Chandra found that it was not correct to follow the China Mode. He was the first to make this observation. As a result, Chandra joined hands with many comrades like Dange, Ajay Kumar Ghosh, and Machineni Basava Punnaya, and made a secret visit to Moscow and held discussion with Stalin on armed movement. Once it was planned to stop the Telangana armed movement, Comrade Rajeshwarao met the armed forces in the forest and explained them about the decision of the high command. He went through the forests of Telangana for two months. At this stage, Indian armed forces were carrying combining operations around those forests. It was a dangerous exercise to meet the guerrilla units escaping the sight of military forces. Rao did not give up hope, never looked back. He roamed all the forests of Telangana, giving a slip to the forces. This movement provided the poor the lands to the tune of lakh acres in villages under the aegis of Andhra Mahasabha and Communist Party. All such movements led to the amalgamation of Nizam Samastanam into Indian Union and further led to the coming into light of linguist states. These were some of the stalwarts he associated with during various struggles and movements undertaken by the party. Ajay Ghosh, P.C. Joshi, B.T. Ranadive, Sundaraya, Jyoti Basu, Surjit, Adhikari, Dange, Ramurthy, 
सरदेसाई एन के कृष्णन भूपेश गुप्ता गोविंद नायर अच्युत मेनन भवानी सेन जगन्नाथ सरकार अरुणा आशिफा अली इंद्रजीत गुप्ता एंड बर्दन Chandra made his sincere efforts to avoid a split in the party cadre in 1964. But the split took place, making the party into two. Later, he made further efforts day and night to restore the bifurcated party. Chandra Rajeshwara was elected as the general secretary in Communist Party's 7th annual general meeting, held in Bombay in 1964. From then onwards he continued in that position till 1989 when the party's 14th meet held in Calcutta. He had given up the post in 1990 owing to ill health. He voluntarily gave up the membership of national committee in the party's 15th meet in Hyderabad held in 1992. He took up the party activities uninterruptedly with dedication for party for about 60 years. As the general secretary of party, Comrade Chandra Rajeshwarao headed many movements: party meetings and rallies of 1966 and 1973, which were held in Delhi, were headed by Chandra. He also led the land attack movement of 1970, anti-hoarding movement of 1973-74, national anti-cooperation movement. Rallies against rupee depreciation in 1966 and a big rally was held on March 23, 1973 in Delhi against Indira Gandhi who captured power promising garibi hatao and did not keep it up Chandra headed this in the name of Delhi Chalo about 10 lakh people had participated in this rally he conducted land attack movement in 1970 demanding the land to be assigned to those who were tilling the lands 70% of laborers depend on such lands he announced land for those who toil for it was his dictum he brought into light about the lands that were held by many rich landlords and industrialists as a result of such movements many congress ruled state governments executed land reforms acts land sealing regulations were modified he launched the bharatiya khel mazdoor union bkmu and the problems of agricultural coolies were brought to the national platform chandra had a major role in the movements held for the welfare of rural poor wastelands and house sites chandra made efforts for the unity and whenever a sectionist movement came into light he reached that place and snubbed such movement by advocating the effect of unified country in 1965 When Pakistan waged a war against India, he visited many border places like Firozpur, Amritsar, Ambala, and many other cities and filled courage in the masses. He also held talks with military commanders and encouraged them. He opposed the